In this video, we are going to meet the discrete Fourier transform. Here we see a periodic function which repeats itself after a period of 2 pi. So you see a few of the cycles of this function. And we can ask ourselves, uh, how does this, how does this uh, function decompose into sines and cosines? So for a well-behaved function, we can do this. That's uh, the Fourier analysis. And here we see that the function, uh, the black function, is composed of three terms. The major term is the sine, the sine of x. But there's also a 10% contribution of a, um, a sine with a twice the frequency and also a 20% contribution of a cosine with three times the frequency. So it, uh, it wiggles three times as often as the basic sine. Also, this cosine is shifted a little bit. So the Fourier series expresses the decomposition that we just saw. So assume we, ha we have a well-behaved periodic function. So the function value in t plus capital T equals the function value in t for all t in the real numbers. And the function may be complex. Then we can write the function as the sum of ck, coefficient ck, times e to the power 2 pi, pi i kt divided by the period, which is capital T. And uh, e to the power i t, as we all know, is the cosine of t plus i times the sine of t, where i is the complex number with i squared equals minus 1. Then we can compute, if the function is well behaved, smooth, we can compute the Fourier coefficients by taking 1 over the period times the integral over one period of the function value times e to the power minus 2 pi i kt divided by the period t. So that's the same exponent, except uh, we have a minus sign instead of the plus sign in the series. So this is a way of computing this in a continuous fashion. But then our world is discrete, at least our computer world is discrete. And if we sample the function at regular intervals, then we get sampling points tj, time j, if you want, which is j times the period, capital T, divided by n, if we have n sample points. And for example, on a compact disk, we have 44,100 sample points per second. And this is also what we, we get in a lot of streaming audio applications. So this is a sampling uh, interval which uh, suits uh, the frequency range of the human ear. In pictures, we have pixels, for example, a high-resolution re digital image, a 4K image, has 4096 times 4096 pixels. And in computer tomography, we, we have 3D pictures uh, where we have 1024 times 1024 times 1024 voxels, volume elements. If we want to get the, approx uh, the approximation of the Fourier coefficients, we need to approximate the integral. And we can use that uh, we can do that by using the trapezoidal rule, which basically says take for an interval tj to tj plus 1, take the value at the left side, at the lower end of the interval, at the right side, divide by 2. So we take the average and you multiply by the length of the interval, which is capital T divided by n. And then if we take that approximation and we do that for the whole interval for a complete period, so cutting it up into n 
small intervals, then you see we get uh, from the leftmost interval, we can get a contribution of F0 divided by 2. From the rightmost interval, we get uh, the, the endpoint F of t divided by 2. And then from all the intermediate intervals together, we get a sum from uh, 1 to n minus 1 of this function sampled in those points tj. We can simplify this because the function is periodic, so f0 and ft are equal, and we can write it then uh, also cancelling the capital T's uh, in, in front of the big expression. We, we get a function, we get a sum of 1 over n, and then the sum from j equals 0 to n minus 1 of the sampled function value f in tj times e to the power minus 2 pi ij k divided by n. It's almost the complete Latin alphabet that we have here. And this expression is the Fourier transform of the sample points. So formally, we de uh, define the discrete Fourier transform of a vector x of length n as the vector y, also of length n. And we define it as yk equals the sum from j equals 0 to n minus 1 of xj e to the power minus 2 pi ijk divided by n. And since we don't want to mention all the letters of the alphabet all the time, we uh, introduce an abbreviation, which is omega n is e to the power minus 2 pi i divided by n. So that is what we will use in, uh, in our algorithms and in our formulas. So if we have omega 8, then we can draw a picture of all the powers of omega 8 that are relevant. Omega 8 equals e to the power minus 2 pi i divided by 8, which is half square root 2 minus ha half square root 2 times i. And you can see, uh, see it on this uh, circle. You see the powers of omega going from omega to the power 0, which is 1, to omega to the power 7. So clockwise in this case. Now I have a question to you. What is omega n to the power n? And related to this, what is omega n to the power n over 2? Okay, you may get it. Omega n to the power n is a full circle we get back to 1. So that's the answer. And then omega n to the power n over 2 is half a circle. So we get omega n to the power n over 2 equals minus 1. And these are useful relations later on. We would like to express the discrete Fourier transform in terms of linear algebra, in terms of a matrix computation. And uh, we can do that by defining the Fourier matrix Fn, where in row j and column k, we have the power j times k of omega n. Okay, so now if we multiply Fn with the vector x, then we get a sum from k equals 0 to n minus 1 of Fn at position jk times xk. And this turns out to be exactly the definition of the discrete Fourier transform. So this holds for every j, and that means that the, the multiplying fn with a vector x equals performing a dft on the vector x. If we uh, now look at the case n equals 4, we see that this Fourier matrix has all these powers 
of omega 4. And since omega 4 is just minus the imaginary number i, we, we get uh, in the first row, we just get the zeroth power of this, which are all ones. But in the second row, we get the powers 0, 1, 2, 3. So you recognize minus i, minus i squared, which is minus 1. And then, uh, then we get minus i to the power 3, which is i. So this is a matrix which just contains ones, minus ones, i's, minus i's. To summarize, we can use the discrete Fourier transform to find the periodic uh, expansion and the corresponding Fourier coefficients of a periodic function, provided that function is sufficiently smooth. And the DFT is then defined by yk equals the sum of j equals 0 to n minus 1 of xj times omega n to the power j times k. And omega n is defined as e to the power minus 2 pi i divided by n. And we also can view this uh, DFT as a matrix vector multiplication with the Fourier matrix. Now a question to you. We can define the i DFT of a vector y as the vector z, both of length n, with zk equals 1 over n times the sum from j equals 0 to n minus 1 of yk, yj times e to the power plus 2 pi i j k divided by n. Now, can you prove that the i dft is the inverse of the dft? And note that it looks very much alike. There's only this extra factor 1 over n that we put here, and there's a plus in the exponent instead of a minus.